Savior, we bless your holy name. Reach into our hearts and minds and withdraw the darkness that lurks deep within our soul. Replace it with that wonderful, glorious light that comes from you through love, sacrifice, grace, and mercy. Allow it to beam out from us so that we can touch the lives of many. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of all power, open our ears, our eyes, and our hearts with the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Help us to hear your voice, to see your ways, and to receive with joy your grace from on high. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, 
though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God. Please rise as you're able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. The Helper will come, the Spirit, who reveals the truth about God and who comes from the Father. I will send him to you from the Father, and he will speak about me. And you, too, will speak about me, because you have been with me from the very beginning. I have told you this, so that you will not give up your faith. You will be expelled from the synagogues. And the time will come when those who kill you will think that by doing this they are serving God. People will do these things to you because they have not known either me or the Father. But I have told you this, so that when the time comes... For them to do these things, you will remember what I told you. I did not tell you these things at the beginning, for I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me where I am going. And now that I have told you, 
your hearts are full of sadness. But I'm telling you the truth. It is better for you that I go away, because if I do not go, the Helper will not come to you. But if I do go away, then I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove to the people of the world that they are wrong about sin and about what is right and about God's judgment. They are wrong about sin because they do not believe in me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Last Thursday, in the midst of all that was going on across our country, Archbishop Jose Gomez of Los Angeles told the people of his diocese that racism is a sin. And racism is the opposite, he said, the opposite of what God wants from us as human beings. The bishop added, he said that the way forward is not hate. The way forward is love. And he told his people, nothing is gained by hate. And so much is lost by hate. I printed a poster from the internet last week. It said very simply, hate is heavy. Let it go. Let it go. A young girl, her name was Lauren, ran away from home at 19 and quietly married the guy she was in love with. Lauren's father was so angry at what she had done that he made it clear he would never forgive her and that she would never be welcome home after that. He told her he never wanted to see her again. Lauren was sorry as the years went on and she wrote letters to her father asking for his forgiveness. But her father remained unforgiving. She eventually gave birth to a baby boy, and she named that boy Tyler. And one day when Tyler was between four and five years old, Lauren had an idea. What if she brought Tyler over to meet his grandfather? Well, she drove across the town to her father's house. He had never met Tyler. Tyler didn't know his grandfather. But the house was just as Lauren had remembered it from several years before. Tyler went to the door and knocked and the grandfather answered. And as he saw Lauren standing at a distance, the grandfather reached down and picked up his grandson. And immediately his grandson kissed him on his hand and then gave him a full hug around his shoulders as he got lifted up. That grandfather's heart melted in those moments and he motioned for Lauren to come in, to come into the house with Tyler. Love took over that day in that small town in central Ohio. Love has been the modus operandi all over the country these past seven days between so many marchers and the police, marchers reaching across the barricades to fist bump the police, and police kneeling down, taking a knee among the marchers. Jesus teaches us to forgive to love one another. One night, many years ago, I couldn't sleep, and I'm lying there looking up 
at the ceiling. And I found myself asking Jesus, just how much do you love me? And Jesus seemed to appear there on the ceiling. And he said to me, how much do I love you? And then he stretched out his arms as far as they would go. And he said, this much. And then he died. The old spiritual says it this way. If you cannot preach like Peter and you cannot pray like Paul, just tell the love of Jesus how he died to save us all. We've spent the past 11 Wednesdays and the past 11 Sundays as Epiphany Church respecting the rules and the guidelines of a viral pandemic. The pandemic of COVID-19 has hit Baltimore especially hard. It has affected us as individuals and as families and certainly as a church. It's been nothing like we've ever known before. But last week, I learned that 10 pharmaceutical companies are getting close to a possible vaccine with two of them already into human trials. But there's a new pandemic, a new pandemic that burst on the scene since the needless and uncalled for death of George Floyd. And it's affecting us all. It's not the viral kind. It's a spiritual kind of pandemic. It's a pandemic of the human spirit. It's a pandemic which is rooted in every, every humanly caused action that hurts someone else. It's made up of every injustice and every wrong that has been committed against another human But there is a balm also in this land, a balm that can make the wounded whole, just like there was a balm in Gilead that healed the sin-sick souls of those Old Testament people. There is a cure for this new pandemic, and it is simply unselfish human love. Jesus was following the teachings of Moses when he told us long ago, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind, and you shall love others in the same way. That is the way God intends us to live our lives. That is the way, not just for you and for me individually, but, us for, but for us as a society and as a human family. Love for each other is our great hope. And it is the best way out of this pandemic that was caused by evil, that tries to take us where we know we should not go. You've heard it before but it's ours to embrace in these times. You've heard it all that is needed for the powers of evil to succeed is for enough good people to do nothing. Do you know the hymn? Sometimes I feel discouraged and I think my life's in vain. But then the Holy Spirit revives my soul again. There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. 
There is a balm in Gilead to heal the sin-sick soul. Love is the way. It was the way in Gilead. And it's the balm for these times. There's a part of me that keeps reciting those words of the psalmist. How long, O oh Lord, how long will people be mistreated? Well, I am a person of faith, and I try very hard to follow in the footsteps of the Master. He is the balm in my life, and he has taught me to love others as I love myself. He has taught me that that is the best way out of my long history of standing, standing by while others are being mistreated. Love shared in the name and for the sake of Jesus Christ is the balm for these times. If you cannot preach like Peter and you cannot pray like Paul, just tell the love of Jesus, how he died to save us all. There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. Together, we must join our hands, and with the love of Christ, let us help to make the days to come better for everyone. Amen.
After such words of inspiration and such beautiful singing, I hope that you'll feel inspired to be a part of the ministry that we share here at the God is Love Church. Um, we are not yet the church that we, uh, that we hope to be. God is yet still calling us to call out the ways in which we can grow into being the God is Love Church. But you are a part of that through your offerings and through the food that you drop by, uh, through your prayers. At this time, we especially invite you to consider what gift you will give, that you might give that online at god-is-love.org slash donate, or that you might mail your offering to 4301 Rasp Avenue 21206. Uh, the link is directly in the comments. And reflect on that as we sing, uh, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Forgotten. You know each of us by name, even the hair on our heads are numbered. We thank you for walking with us daily and restoring our land to a place we can all be proud of. These mercies we ask in no other name but the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And now I invite you to join hands with those near you or to lift up your hands in prayer as we pray the prayer our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, siblings in Christ, this service has come to an end. Go into your week serving our Savior with love delighting in the life God has given you. And may God be with you till we meet again. Amen. Amen.
Thank you.